The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Tommy O'Brien. I'm fortunate today to be joined by our man Basil Chapman filling in for Tom. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Uh, happy post-4th of July. How was your 4th? It was very good. Quiet, but good. Usually good. we go to some friends on the 4th uh, this year. We're going to be doing it on uh, Sunday. So it's delayed, nice. but uh, that's good. Yeah, it's a little bit of an interesting holiday, right? You get half a day Wednesday, you get off Thursday. For us, a lot of people off Friday, but you got to come back to work on Friday because a lot of the celebrations last night, I was fortunate, actually, Bloomberg played the Boston Pops with those fireworks. So I was watching those at home last night, uh, ringing yeah, in. Yeah, and what a beautiful day. Two they do. They do such a great job. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, some people go on uh, the day before, get their seats. Right. They, they want those front row esplanade seats. That's right. That's right. Gotta and, love it. Uh, well, know, this is, uh, it's interesting because it was 1929 when the Boston uh, Pops started with Arthur Fiedler. Amazing. Yeah. History is amazing, man. The world has changed a lot since 1929. 90 years, amazing. That doesn't even feel like 90 years. I was born in 80, but it's 2019, amazingly enough. Uh, back to the market, folks. We got a negative yes. action to start things off. The Dow, negative 144 points, trading 26,821. We got S&Ps negative by about 18, trading at 29,77. NASDAQ negative by 52, trading at 8,117. Jobs number coming in this morning, big number, 224,000. The market reacting, the potential for maybe not as high of a probability of a rate cut. You're seeing yields, 10-year jumping from about 1.98 back to 2.05. Market pulling back a bit on the probability that there might not be as high of a probability of that rate cut coming. Um, so, Basil, what's your take on uh, the market reaction and this jobs number? Pretty interesting um, that, you know, it's quite a world we live in where you get great economic news, and the market's always worried that that means things are too good and the rates are going to come back. It's an inverse relationship almost to how it used to be, but that is a reality right. we live in. So there are a couple of things going on. What I was telling my subscribers to my opening call, because we've been long since uh, the low of uh, June the 3rd, and uh, I would said um, when I was doing my work over the weekend, in fact, I did quite a lot of work over the uh, uh, from uh, the close on Wednesday through Thursday. I had time just to go through a lot of charts. I did a lot of work on stuff that I don't ever, ever get a chance to look at in depth, and that was really very, um, I would say it was very rewarding to do that. So this is what I, the, the conclusion I'd come to already back on Wednesday, I said, I anticipate that in the next few days we're going to make some kind of a top in the market and it's a top that could be, I'll call it a short-term top, but I think it could be a surprise and, and, and a lot of things could be changing. And I'll explain why, if I've got a moment. Go for it. Uh, so in the Dow, we always look at, let me just do this real quickly here. This is the patterns, we always, the core patterns in the Chapman Wave. We try to nice. identify a low bar, merely count each successively higher bar, every higher peak, alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up. When you get to the fourth highest peak, A, B, C, D, that D is where other things can happen. It's just, it's as simple as that. The object of the Chapman Wave methodology is to get you from that low point to at least a D. And then it could recycle a whole bunch of things. But at D, that's what you've got to be careful of. I think there are only three particular patterns in the market, straight up, straight down, like this uh, left side um, horizontal, I'm sorry, uh, diagonal line. Then there's a cup formation or a cup formation or an arch formation, and then you can get a combination. So basically, you're looking at straight up, straight down. You got the arch or you got the cup, and those could be V-shaped patterns, but it's the same principle going from one point, rallying, coming back to it, testing it, rallying up to one point, coming down, and then going back to test that upside action. So now let's get rid of this and see exactly what's happening here. So we've got that low bar from the uh, right here on the third at uh, the uh, low of 24,680. 
we start up and we go straight up. And what do we get to? We get to a peak C. But within that context is a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. And you can see it right here. It means that when you get into this area, there's a good chance that unless you snap right through it, this is going to be a repellent zone. If it was on the way down, it would be a propellant zone. But this is leg C in the Dow. But look at this. this the the S&P right here. You've got to a leg D. It's probably a peak D to, today. What do I always say? D is where you've got to be somewhat careful. And look at the QQQ. It went to an E. So everything there was telling me that we are in a, in a very important moment in terms of price and time and that I'm anticipating, I said to subscribers, let's take a little bit off our long position because I think we're getting to the area where there's going to be a lot of resistance. So at the open, or if people were able to do it before the open, nice. we got out of a little bit of our, our, our long position in the Dow. And because of that, I'm saying that the, with the Dow, there should be somehow, some way, I don't know how this works, but there should be another nominal new high to the in the Dow to a leg D and that'll be above the high of Friday which was 26,966 my automatic Chapman wave uh, projections of resistance and support right here you can see 26,999 999 is, that's right yeah 999 uh, is going to be a resistance and we got that peak D in the 120 minute chart and we're pulling okay. back so that's one area now if we look at the bonds this is also going to be very interesting because bonds, I said, let's be careful here. I think the yields are going to have a little bit of a bounce. And here we've gotten, we don't know yet because today is, uh, what was the high? 157.27, sorry, 157 and 230 seconds on the 4th. And uh, that was overnight, I guess. That was last night where the market was open overseas. 157 and 230 seconds. So we are in a leg D. With a strong red candle, I suspect that the bonds are going to be pulling back a little bit right here. Yeah. But look at gold. And the reason why I think this is such an important moment, look at the gold. We made a peak F and we did a double top. And now we're pulling back sh sharply. So if you're looking at the different important areas, and I was going to ask you a question. So let me just finish to say, I think this is a very important moment. I would not be surprised if the market is in the process of making some kind of a shorter term top. And uh, even if there's a normal new, new high in the Dow, I don't think it's going to go much higher than the high of uh, Wednesday. And that's where I stand. My question to you is, since uh, uh, your dad's uh, deep into uh, real estate as well as having the uh, gold newsletter, um, what do you think about the uh, rates right now? Yeah, it's uh, if you can figure out rates like we always say, you'll figure out the whole piece of the pie as in they seem to be driving everything. And that's what's so interesting is these jobs numbers come out and the market takes things inversely as in if things are going too well, then that means that the cuts not might not be coming down the line and sitting at, you know, 2 percent. We've had such a run. I mean, you did a great job of looking at those markets. When you look at the Dow, what did we go, 2,000, 2,500 points in the Dow in the month of June alone? And, it was a fantastic You know, the move, Qs, yes. I think you just had, went from 170 to 195. You're talking about 25 points when it was trading at 170. What's that, 15 percent in the month of yeah. June? Um, let alone where rates have come from and the run that gold has had. Uh, so it's natural and, you know, it's great to see it on your Chapman wave. It's natural to get these kind of pullbacks, I think, when you've had that type of a run. So we'll finish it up right after this break, folks. Come on back in three minutes. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of tfnn.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman. This morning, we got markets hanging around negative territory. Dow still down about 150. S&P is negative by about 22, 7 tenths percent. NASDAQ negative by about 60, about 7 tenths percent as well. So, Basil, just finishing that conversation we were having in terms of these moves, I was just playing around with some of the Fibonacci retracements that we've had since that June 3rd run, basically up into the highs we had as of Wednesday. Um, and I got the chart up here. So, you know, the 38% retracement level is pretty decently below anywhere we're at. Now, the Qs, they made a run from about 170 up to 191.44. You know, you put a Fibonacci there. If you want to get to the 38%, you, know, you got to get all the way back down to basically 183. We're trading at 189.78. Looking at the gold contract, um, pretty similar action. I had this down here. So we went in gold. I mean, pretty remarkable. We were trading at 1280 on coming into June. We reached 1442, the 38% on that number, about 1380, so much closer to that number. We almost made it down there in the beginning of this yeah, week. Yeah, the right. Right? That's and right. then we got quite a flush up to almost 1440 again for that kind of double top that you want to keep your eye on for sure. But, uh, you know, it's not like it's an unhealthy pullback, maybe not the best case scenario getting that double top, but still above that 38%. And then I just pulled up the TLT for a quick reference for the bonds and uh, similar story. I mean, huge run, right? TLT was sitting there at about 125, makes it all the way up to 134. The 38% on that is still more than a solid point, 130.81 as we sit in the 10-year at what 2.05 2.06 uh yeah 2.068 percent right now on the 10 year i have so you know when i see that pullback um that's kind of what i look to you know when we start getting back to those numbers if this really gets deep into that range then i'll have to kind of reevaluate but as of right now not kind of the end of the world you know you'd want to keep your eye on things for sure because it's interesting today being such kind of an obscure day in terms of the market action what we may see so slow in the market a lot of people even if they don't have off, they would probably take off, right? You know, in terms of a weekend holiday, July 4th, 
Uh, you take off Friday and you get yourself almost a four and a half, five day weekend. So the we'll road, really see. The roads were absolutely empty. So yes, yeah, my, was mine a, was as well quiet. in Florida. And I also heard that on Wednesday, the. Uh, the the ride down to the Cape was busy as of like 11 a.m. as in the Wednesday they they I were heard off to, so as well Ted yeah they were off terribly to, backed up yeah, yeah so that would make sense as in everyone's away for the weekend so it'll be really interesting to see how uh, things happen on Monday when kind of people are back in action as much as much as you can be for a July Monday but back in action kind of taking heed of what this means for the rate cuts coming down the line and what it means for the market. Well, two things. One is, if you're looking at the Philadelphia housing sector index, the daily has just gone to a leg D and making a peak D as we speak. The technicals are good, but there's a pattern I always look for. It's like an M-shaped pattern in the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence. And this right side is showing the price went up much sharper than the technicals. And that says, yep, at 318, it could pull back towards the 315, 310 area, just give back some of the gains that were made, but it's huge gains going from 227 in December to the most recent high a few days ago, 324. I mean, this is 100 points in, a, in the housing sector index, and the all-time high was 369 in January of 2018, slumped down to the 227 level. Quite so a move. it's kind of, it's about, yeah, it's made, it's made over 50%. You know, you can understand there's a bit of a breather, but I did want to mention you were talking in your uh, really excellent, uh, concise, um, that was the 10 a.m. Up market update. You were talking about the semis. So yes. look at the SMHs. I was waiting I, to jump over. This. Quite a move today, yeah. Well, I what I did was, as I say, I had time to do a couple of things. I like to do overlapping where you've got the core, something that's very important, and then you overlap something else that kind of correlates. Nice. In this case, the SMHs, that's the red pattern you can see here. Okay. And the green is Teledyne. Well, I've followed Teledyne for years and years, decades, actually. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, now called Teledyne, um, what is it, Technologies. And they're into semiconductors and other other tech, uh, um, the electronic technology area, and also different uh, gas meters and things like that. But the semis is really important. They made a new all-time high. Let me just show the actual chart right, right here. Um, just the other day, uh, they went uh, that yeah, and that's at a peak C as well. And that went to uh, 279. Said so a spectacular move from 232. Just in June, but the low was 190 in December. So this is a spectacular move, a move, and this is crazy. I I was talking to your dad about um, the billing to the semiconductor industry, and I showed him charts from January and February and March, and the semiconductors had taken out taken off in a fantastic move to the upside. They went from, in fact, 97 to the most recent high just on the 1st of um, July, to 115. But the billing has been terrible, except I don't have the latest figures, but even the April showed that there was um, uh, probably a minus 20 or something, which is, I mean, that's, that's really quite negative. Yeah. So sometimes the indexes or the stocks get away from the around there's a divergence between the emotional part where people are buying sure. and the technical i like to do an mri of the patient <laughs> and the x-ray yes says well wait a minute so is this teledyne and it, first of all is the semiconductor telling us that the billings are starting to improve well some samsung just came out and said things yeah, are not great i was waiting to drop um, that their second quarter profit likely fell 56 percent from a year ago was the headline yeah, so look, the SMHs are down a dollar seventy today, but that's a fabulous percentage move. So this says to me now, I've got a lot of work over the weekend to do because I'm trying to project out to say, wait a minute, Teledyne doing this well, it must be other parts of the business as well. Yes. It can't just be the semis. Yes. So it's 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 getting kind of complicated in the sense that um, we're. We're in unexplored territory right now. We're looking at all-time highs. We're looking at uh, a lot of diversions in statistics that are coming up and the prices, and some of it's good and some of it's bad. So this is a period where I think you've got to be a little bit cautious just to say, wait a minute, 
we're, we're looking at um, the lowest yields that we've had in, in decades over the past four or five years, and it's still at the lows. And yet the housing sector, you would expect that the housing sector, the correlation to me would say, hey, wait a minute, housing should be at all-time highs. So they're not. They've had a really good rally, but they're only kind of halfway from the all-time high. So trying to put the whole picture together makes it a lot more complex. There's, there are two ways to look at it. Either you do a lot of homework or you just simply say, you know what, this is a mega bull market. The rates are the lowest they've been. People have nowhere else to put their money. Just back off, go on holiday, take a world tour. We're going higher. I mean, that's an easy way to, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Just make yes. it easy because that's been the reality for nine years, right? It's pretty amazing, All these man. horrible headlines and you just keep making new highs. It is pretty amazing. We'll see if we can continue, but I know just Wednesday, we have S&Ps, new highs right across the board and, uh, and we might have rate cuts to go along with that. How do we, we'll yeah, see. Right. We're going to continue this conversation in three minutes, folks. Come on back with us. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets slipping a little bit into more negative territory. Down now negative 177. S&P's negative 23. NASDAQ negative by 65. Basil, I just wanted to dig into that actual payroll and what is in there for a moment because that, of course, driving a lot of the action that we're getting this morning. So the headline number, of course, we've heard it many times, 224,000 jobs added in June. Expectation had been about 165. Unemployment rate actually hedging a bit higher from 3.6 to 3.7 still right next to that 50-year low wage growth 3.1 percent year over year pretty much in line with expectations and I just want to break down where those jobs actually came from always kind of interesting to see professional in business services led the job gains with 51,000 healthcare added 35,000 transportation and warehousing contributed another 24 construction coming in with 21,000 and manufacturing despite teetering on contraction recently saw 17,000 jobs added and then you get uh let's see uh so that's pretty much your breakdown there so interesting <coughs> that, that, those are very important areas yeah right no i i agree um one of the things we had talked to kevin hinks about is that you know you might see in the coming months a tick up in government jobs having to do with the census coming in 2020 that will right. contribute right. in some capacity these non-farm payroll numbers coming in at some point um i didn't see that number up there so far but we'll keep our eye on it but decent numbers man across the board in in very important categories like you're talking about you know whether it's healthcare professional business services construction 21,000 always good to see construction manufacturing um, numbers for the economy for sure and, you know I had a, a question that was just sent to me isn't the market going down because the jobs report might mean no rate cut or reduced rate cut in July curious on your thoughts so um, you know there are a couple of things going on the Fed is in a situation where the market is kind of taking care of a lot of things without them doing very much. And at the same time, the way they look at the figures, the way they've announced that they're going to be looking at the figures and they have looked at the figures before, means that exactly what you were talking about when you mentioned the jobs, these are the particular jobs that really count because this is what leads to uh, more growth in the sense that now um, people can afford houses a little easier yes because and the job security but it wasn't that over the last six months what i've noticed is that the number of how do i put this the number of switches in jobs in other words people have become comfortable enough to resign or quit their job okay to move to a better paying job or a job that they want and that to me is always the criteria that's most important because when the comfortability factor increases, three things are happening. One is it means a certain amount of time has gone by that people say, okay, we've kind of tested everything. I don't feel that uh, the economy is as bad as uh, the news media is making out. I think things are, quite, things are quite good. That's number one. Number two is I've got a job that I've kind of stuck with for a period of time, and I don't see the growth possibilities, but I didn't want to give it up because... Who knows if I could have gone in a better sure. job. Now I feel I can get a better job. I'm going to take that risk. And the third thing is there is um, economic growth because the comfortability factor means that their people are feeling a little more secure economically. Therefore, they can take the gamble, which you couldn't before because you could be stuck for not one month. It could be six or eight months oh, without easy, a job. Right. Yeah. So I think that that to me is, I think those are the criteria. If I was at the Fed, that's what I'd be looking at. When those things change, then I'd say, uh-oh, now the economy could be in trouble. So as it stands right now, I think this is the market reaction. To me, it's just a technical. We were anticipating some kind of a pullback in any case. And at the same time, um, the timing is just right because we were very overbought in many sectors. So if you are looking at it in terms of this is a perfect time for the market to take a breather. It's got an excuse. The Fed doesn't really have to do anything just now. They have to see how things play out. Yes. Kind of the summertime. They must have a full month, right? They really do. I think it's July 31st right. is their next. Um, it's the end of the month. Right? Yeah. I think it's the end of the month. Yes, and, I think uh, so. You know, it just yeah. gives them time. They don't have to rush into doing right. anything. That, that allows me to say 
that means the, the, the cap that I'm looking at in the market on the shorter term, making the 27,000 area for the Dow, kind of tough resistance to get sure. through. I, I personally would like a breather. Not only that, there's an area that's working today. And we happen to be long for my subscribers to my opening call. It's in the iShares, the Broker, Dealer, and Securities ETF. Okay. We've been long, we've been long for a while. <clears throat> And it's an area when I did my webinar a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned if this area starts to improve, it was at the time when I did it, we were down to the 61-ish, 62 area. I said if the IAA, which is trading right now, 64, 68, up 25 cents when the general market's down quite sharply, what I said is if the brokers, if the brokers start to do well and the IAA can start to get to the 65s and then treat the 63s as support, and they move higher than the 65s, that would tell me that overall, the brokers are starting to see the public get into the market. To me, that would be very a very important sign. So I, this is nice. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, hey, I didn't expect that. IAA is up <laughs> today yes. when the general market's down. I like that. That's a good sign to me. Definitely in terms of the market and that thing popping for sure. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity, Basil, you're talking about a lot. Your newsletter, of course, the opening call. Folks, you can come on over. Basil does a great job. It almost feels like we just got over a weekend, Basil, right? In terms you know, of I, like, I can't believe it's Friday. I keep I thinking know. it's Monday. And, uh, I agree. And picture. it's yeah, I joked this morning when I came in. I said, I, I can dig these one-day work weeks because that's almost how it feels like. You know, you're off for two days. You <laughs> come right. back Friday, and you're off for two days. Uh, not the end of the world. Uh, but, folks, Basil does a great job on the weekends, even Saturdays. He's got an update for subscribers as he's going through those charts Sundays he's got an update I check him out myself I encourage you to come over to the front page of TFNN right there the opening call you'll be able to get access to all the archives and of course Basil whether he's got this morning his newsletter over the weekend and then you gain access to four of those archived webinars the one that he just did in June that he was just talking about less than a month ago talking about the tide bullish and bears and then he's got three more in there I believe they're all 90 minute webinars that you got in there for your subscribers yes. Basil so great time to do it you're down Cape Cod you're out in the beautiful West Coast wherever you are on the weekend you can pull that up right on the website and check that out and uh, I'll even get in there I'm in there one second there we go I'm gonna show him a quick peek Basil of those archives and um because i may watch one this weekend myself so there's the archive section folks you get all those archive webinars let alone you gain access to all of the newsletters basil puts out so i encourage people check it out over the weekend it's a great time to make it happen basil i always look forward to those charts the updates you're always putting out good content even on the weekend folks he doesn't stop digesting those markets for sure uh so back to the markets where we are right now we got the dow creeping lower approaching 200 points to the negative right now we got s and p's where are we come on load for me there we go we got the dow it's not cooperating there we go dow down 191 folks trading 26,774 nasdaq now 70 points in the negative s and p's negative 25 we'll be right back If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets trading lower, down now negative 214. We got the S&Ps negative by 26, NASDAQ negative by 73. That's a solid nine-tenths of a percent. We're at session lows as we speak on a slow Friday. Basil, I see you checking out the VIX over there. Let's see what's going on. I like that. Yeah, so I had a question. Yeah, when I look at the VIX, sure, I look at the VIX. The VIX is at 14.39. It's at 1.82, up 14%. Getting a little pop on that negative pullback, yeah. It, it is. It is. It's quite, I mean, do you realize that uh, on a percentage basis, it was down at 12.04 early this morning, and now it's uh, almost at the highs, which is at... Um, 14.39. You start playing those percentage <laughs> games That's on the VIX, man. Right? Well, watch out. No, seriously, right? Because you can and get I, that pop. And I, you know, I hadn't even realized, Basil, that we were that low on the VIX earlier this week because we were kind of hanging around the 15 level for a while, even when the market was at all time highs, right? So and I kind of. It was a quick drop. It, it went yeah. quickly to the 14s and then 13, and today to hit 12. Yeah. And uh, in my one of the bullet points on my news that on my time, the. Uh, the final page that I sent out, this is the uh, the Traders Corner, uh, let's see, number 12 bullet point. I have the TVIX, and I said that it could see a, a big spike by next week. So we got it today. And uh, But I didn't really want to play that, uh, the VIX index myself, because although I anticipated there should be a bad report, in fact, I wanted to send out something last night. But I knew nobody could do anything. I didn't even know if anybody would even be looking at this. July 4th but, fireworks, know, Basil. No, no <laughs> charts that time. That's right. You held off I until the morning. Nobody else was. Right? But no, I was, I was doing some action, too. I hear you. It felt like a Sunday <laughs> night, kind of. It did. The, uh, it was so weird. Yeah. Right. yeah. But, and then I look out the window, and I see the fireworks, and I thought, hey, is that, is that symbolic of what's going to happen tomorrow right. in the market? It might be. <laughs> We're early in the market, hitting lows, yeah. Yeah, so, but the, but the issue here is that I have a rule of thumb, and I've had this rule of thumb for a long time. It used to be slightly different numbers, but about 10, maybe 12 years ago, I changed the numbers, and the numbers will go like this for me. If the volatility index is trading in the 13 or, or double digits low, in other words, 13 to 12 to 11, anywhere below 13, that, that's usually a good sign, means that there's buying in the market. Especially if it's in the 11s. Yes. But yes. What's interesting is that once it gets to the mid teens, to about the 15 and a half, 16 and a half area, then you start to see volatility. When it goes higher into the upper teens, into the 18s and 19s, you're pretty much going to see a triple digit down day and a, a strong double digit down day in the SP. 
not a guarantee that it'll close there, but if the VIX index starts to close in the high teens and then the non intraday pop, but actually closes there, especially two days in a row, which doesn't happen very often, then once you get to the high 19s and 20s, you've got to anticipate very sharp sell offs that close, not necessarily at the lows, but close towards the lows of the day. So I make it real simple. So now we've had a bounce into the 14s, still not bad. But it says, OK, be a little careful here because it's the first indication that we've had the VIX, that the volatility index is being bought. And on a quiet day like this, you can understand that it moves quickly. Yes. But it also means that some people are buying some insurance. Think of Definitely. it as insurance. Yeah. And that's that's really important. So, insurance. Yeah, so the question, no, the question right on is, the S&P. Yes. It's up and it's up a big percentage. Don't ignore it. And if it closes at the high of the day or towards the high of the day, anticipate that Monday could be a down day. Yeah. So we always talk about our man Kevin Hinks turned us on to it in terms of, I know it's out there, but he understands this thing upside down. The rule is 16 on that VIX, right? So when the VIX is sitting at 16, that basically is correlating to when you look at expected market moves and options, right? That's basically correlating to a 1% move in the S&P one out of every three days when it's at 16. So you're right. I mean, if that's sitting at 16 or 17, it's priced in. Now, the S&P is trading at 29.68. A 1% move is almost 30 points in the S&P. So you're talking that's about 300 a 300 Dow points. Yeah, right? right. 300 Dow points. Exactly. Every one out of every three days. Um, so if you're above that level, that means you're looking for, you know, and to put it in. So if you move by one and a half times 16, so let's say you go to 24, which I know is above your high teens, but that correlates to a 1.5% move. Then you're talking about 450 points in the Dow, one out of every three days if the VIX is sitting at 24. So you can see how when you get up to around, just like you're saying, 15, 16, 17, 18, that's saying the market is going to be moving 1% plus one out of every three days. That's almost twice a week you're seeing those types of swings. So I, I would agree, man, that that is some volatility. It's pricing in, which is interesting that we're creeping back up to that 15, 16 level as you have the market at all time highs. But even in such a great market, there's some volatility priced in. There's a lot of, you know, we're dealing with this jobs number. And like you said, we'll see when we come back Monday. But if this holds at 14, 15, 16, the market's saying, you know, be careful. We might see some volatility for sure. So as, I, as I'm looking at it, my impression right now is that there could be, it could be Boeing that suddenly has a, a decent update for a sure. change because it really looks terrible. But it, it, it's, it's kind of oversold technically. So maybe Boeing or, or a couple of stocks, that's all you need. One or two stocks yeah. could help the Dow just make a, it doesn't have to, but I'm anticipating it would be rare to make almost an all time high without going to a leg D sure. in the daily chart. And it was hindered by Boeing. That's why it didn't participate. Right. So maybe it won't do it this time, but it has almost every other time. And even then, it doesn't matter to me because I'm looking at this and saying, I don't want to put on new buys at this particular point because I think that we're getting a little choppy. I'd rather wait for some decent pullback and then have a look. But I must say, looking at those monthly charts and doing the technical work that I did, especially over the last two weeks, um, I like what I see looking out. I, I still think that this is a, an important market. I have a question. I don't know if you were at a party or anything yesterday, but my question whenever I, I speak to people or I come on the air and it's after a holiday, my question is how many people came up to you and considering Wednesday was an all time high in the S&P, did anyone mention the stock market at all? Fortunately not. I got to refrain from from stocks. Uh, but just arbitrarily, did somebody say, oh, man, did I get a killing? I no, didn't they didn't. Like, that's no. A, thankfully, I did not. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that 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 is a market consensus, right? In terms of, fortunately, there was a pool action. There was there was enough of a distraction to stay away from the market, um, maybe. Um, but we'll, well see. My, yeah. my, my, How about yourself? Impression? Well, no, I, I just nobody actually. Yes. Right. No, I should say I should say no, but not true. On Wednesday, did I play tennis on Wednesday? You know, days. <laughs> I think I played tennis on Wednesday. It's tough to um, keep track around these Wednesday, yeah, Thursday, maybe, Friday holidays. Tuesday. That's right. It was Tuesday, and for the first time in a while, two of the players actually said something about. Like, oh, what, what's the market doing? Is it up again? Yeah. I mean, that, that, they didn't know. They just had this kind of look as if, what the heck's going on? Is it up again? So my impression has been that 
people don't want to get into some kind of a, uh, um, a political conversation. It doesn't turn into a conversation. It becomes a kind of a, a conflagration. Yes. Anyone talks politics. So to mention stocks is like mentioning the word Trump. <laughs> Therefore, nobody talks about stocks. That's my impression. Yes, yeah, I somewhat, could be wrong. Because they're a little bit correlated because, uh, I mean, that trade war. He's made it. He's, yeah, uh, the trade he's war said, has been hitting it so hard. But he got, has said that I'm the uh, stock market and I go together. That's the what he pressure said. on the Fed, of course, um, with interest rates correlates. It all ties in. Folks, come on back. Baz and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. And Basil, I just want to jump over Boeing because you make a great point on Boeing. Where Boeing goes, the Dow can go. I got up here a weekly chart going back to just 2010. I mean, you can see this parabolic run that it's had. And Boeing really contributing the points to the Dow. We've reached that four, 446 in the beginning of March. We're sitting at 352. And I was trying to find an article, Basil. I mean, the run that this has had over the last couple of years. And in the I think it's 2,000 Dow points, if I remember correctly. It's, 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 it's remarkable. And it may even be more than that, depending on how far you go back, right? Because of the run that it's had. I just found an article um, that was talking about. So this article from March 5th, and this is just talking about 2019 alone. 
okay? The contribution that Boeing had had leading up to almost that high around March. Now, pretty interesting in hindsight, looking at where it's gone since then. The Boeing has accounted for nearly 30% of the year-to-date as of March 1st with that index. And take a look at the contribution as of March 1st this year, 812 points of the Dow Boeing had had. Now, most of those given back, of course, but just like you're talking about, if you get a pop in Boeing, look at that contribution. The next biggest one, Goldman Sachs at 216. I mean, Boeing just dwarfing. So keep that in mind anytime you're looking at the Dow, folks. I mean, Boeing really putting a hamper on that as it's pulled back, just like it really drove it through the ceiling as it traded higher. Always amazing. And then you look at the tail end, almost, you know, almost uh, pointless to stare at some of these stocks comp right. considering the contribution that they put as compared with the Dow. So right. And of course, say it's because of the weighting of the Dow, and that's the one that only one price only weighted. Indexes. I right. don't know who came up with that idea, Basil. It makes zero sense to me when you have stocks that are Boeing trading at 446, and then you have a company <laughs> like Verizon that's, um, you know, in the 50, 60, and right. just a mammoth company themselves, and they contribute one eighth of it. Well, right. Basil, thank you so much for filling in, man. I always appreciate it, and we look forward to the program at noon, and then you're back in the saddle at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. It's great to be with you. Thank you. You too, Tom. Basil. Have a great one. Stay tuned, folks. Live programming all Friday. Have a great day.